Tony D and Little Joan with a screenwriter's rant on Florida Man, a new series about a guy who goes to Florida and there's lots of crime. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. Links in the description. Comedy Horror in South Jersey. It's the Pineys, books 1 through 11, available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. Um, so, initially I heard Florida Man. I thought, oh, Mike Barron did a comic called Florida Man. This is not that, sadly. And there's been many projects called Florida Man. Uh, this one is about a guy who owed the mob money. So, he took a job working for the mob in order to pay off his debt, which he... Uh, will do if he brings back this hot chick who escaped to Florida, who he's also having an affair with. So it's a lot of twists and turns. So he gets down to Florida, and she's involved in something that's worth $100 million. So he decides to stay and uh, take it or steal it with her. But then there's also another local gangster who this guy... Oh, God, what's his name? That actor's in a bunch of things. He's like the local gangster, and so he's work now he has to work with him, and it's under sun, under the gun, Florida man. And all sorts of crazy Florida memes ensue. And this is like the local cop who can't seem to keep things uh, in order. It doesn't look bad. It looks similar to the Mike Barron concept in that it's about all the crazy things that happen in Florida to some extent or another. In this one, it's more about the crime. Uh, but it does seem... The the, the Mike Barron one seemed more... Um, a less plot-heavy, more focused on a bunch of uh, antics, I'll say. Whereas this one seems to be focused on a, a plot. It's a series, by the way. It's not a movie. Drops on Netflix April 13th. Ah, it doesn't look bad. It, it reminds me a little bit of Burn Notice. In the way it's shot, because um, it goes from sunny times to like these these times a day, and uh, I don't know, it just reminds me a little bit of it. And there's hot chicks, and so I'm not sure how they could sustain this. There's the guy from Avengers. What's his face? I forget his name. Um, I don't see this. I I don't see this being sustainable. After a time, he kind of looks like he reminds me of James O'Keefe, doesn't he? A little bit, a little bit of James O'Keefe in in that guy. Could could even be him, if it, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, so it looks like, and he's the gangster. He's the gangster. He owes money to, and this is the hot girl. So I don't know how how long can you stretch out the whole hot girl teases guy and he does stupid things. I guess, you know, I think it could definitely do a season, maybe two. After that, you've pretty much exhausted it. I, I'd want to see a conclusion. Otherwise, you just got to keep revealing, 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 and the rabbit hole goes deeper and deeper, and then they never get the money, and it's... Unless you completely change the show. So you could have... Let's say you do a first season, it's all about them getting this $100 million, right? Maybe you stretch it out to a second season. Second season... They get the money, and it's about escaping with the money, let's say. Okay, and then you could do a show where they actually escape with the money, right? There's a payoff, and then we get to see all the crazy things they do now that they're rich, right? And uh, But it's called Florida Man, so you can't leave Florida. <laughs> so see, you got a, uh, what's the name, coin? Uh, I forget what they're called. Uh, Spanish doubloon. Uh, from probably from a shipwreck or something. That's what they're fighting over. Hundred hundred million dollars. But you know, after a season of this, maybe two, it's over. You know, can't spend can't spend ten seasons trying to find a treasure. But you could spend two and then have them find the treasure and become rich and then dealing with the fallout of that. But it would turn into a different show, right? It wouldn't be a show about trying to get the treasure. It would become a show about trying to keep it. Um, and you wouldn't have all these lowlifes and interesting characters. It would change. Some of these characters would either get killed or, you know, get away with the money or whatever. I, I, I just don't see it being sustainable beyond 
a season or two. Perfect would be one season, I think. You do one season of this, end it, they, they, they get the money or they lose it all. I mean, that's the other way to end it too, right? Maybe you go two seasons and then at the end, they get into a gunfight on a ship and the uh, uh, bunch of doubloons falls into the ocean in shark infested waters where they'll never get it again or falls into a volcano or whatever. And they're never going to get it again. So, And then they're back where they started trying to avoid the mob or you know being low lives yeah it's 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 a complex problem for for writers part of the problem is you pitch the show and it's got to be exciting right it's got to be exciting you got to get the people who have the money excited about it and and so you you pitch things all the time right so you pitch them one thing like a thing that you can build upon. And they go, nah. <laughs> and then you try to give a little more info. And they're like, nah, that's better, but not quite there. And then you give more, and then you give more. And then finally, you end up in a pitch like this, where it's like, yeah, they're after $100 million. Ooh, yeah, I like it. Yeah, and there's this girl, and he's sleeping with her, but she also slept with the gangster. He's in love with her. She's in love with him, but is she? Back and forth. Oh, yeah, this sounds awesome. But it's only a first season. After that, it just gets tiresome. It's like it's like what they did with Lost. Mystery box, mystery box, mystery box, mystery box. I think some of these executives are like little kids. They want to fill up on candy and then still still have a satisfying dessert. You can't do that. You got to give them the appetizer and lean into it. That's what Breaking Bad was about, right? If you watch the first season of Breaking Bad, it's a little Breaking Bad. It's a little slow. It's a little slow. There's this big learning curve. Walter White doesn't know what he's doing. Jesse kind of does. But together they start doing this thing and it starts to build. And then in the next season, it kind of turns into something else. And then in the next season, it turns into something else. And then it turns into something else. And it's like this ball rolling down a hill. It gets crazier and crazier and crazier. And Walt, you watch Walter White change. And you watch Aaron Paul's character change, Jesse. This isn't that. It can't be. It's starting way up here. Like, if you started with, ah, i got to send you to Florida. And then for whatever reason, he stays. But in order to sell the show, I guarantee you, it was like, no, no, we have to give him something bigger. Let's give him the $100 million Spanish doubloon thing. And he's sleeping with her. And there's other gangsters. And there's this and that. And they throw in all these elements. And yeah, it gets greenlit. But from a creative standpoint, it's really hard to up the ante. Because now you've added this entire cast of characters that are way up here. They're way up here. And really, you wanted a funny, kind of tongue-in-cheek show about Florida and how crime-ridden it is. And you want people to watch it. And the execs have an idea about what people will watch. People have their own ideas. You have your ideas. But at the end of the day, it's only the executives that turn on the money tap. So, anyhow, that's just my two cents. Let's read the write-up. Under the sun, under the gun. Love the tagline. Discover the mystery behind the name meme in Florida Man, the new Netflix limited series. Okay, that's good. From creator T Donald Todd, Ugly Betty, This Is Us. Hmm. Looks funner than those two. Uh, that follows a struggling ex-cop. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Forced to return to his home state of Florida to find a Philly mobster's ooh, runaway girlfriend. That should be a quick gig. What should be a quick gig becomes wildly spiraling journey into... Buried family secrets and an increasingly futile attempt to do the right thing in a place where so much is wrong. Okay, now I'm back on board. Because they're not going to stretch this out another season. Uh, if they do another season, they could go in a completely different direction. But I think this would be... Yeah, this will be fine. Oh, here's the, uh, here's the one-sentence pitch, everybody. They put everything in this. A disgraced cop in debt is forced to return to his home state of Florida for a shady mission only to get swept up in a wild and deadly treasure hunt. Okay. Yeah, I'm on board. I could totally watch this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not Mike Barron. I wish it was. 
But uh, I think they're just borrowing the name. But uh, yeah, all right. A limited series? It's perfect. Perfect. Basically, you're watching a 10-hour movie in like, I don't know, 10 parts. Or a five-hour movie in five parts. I'm going to guess it's an hour apiece, 10, 10 episodes. So, uh, I don't recognize any of the actors, though. Oh, Clark Gregg, he's the guy from Avengers. He's not the main guy, though. So, all right. Yeah. And that's it for me, Tony D, and Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble for a more base takes. If you can find a more base take, take it. I will be at the Florence Library in Roebling, New Jersey, on Thursday, doing my talk on how to hunt the Jersey Devil. Hope to see you there, and we'll see you in the next one.